Man in Gray here with another Man in Gray book review. Today's book is The Man Who Forgot How to Read a Memoir by Howard Engel, published in 2008 by Thomas Dunn Books. It's 176 pages. Now, this book was one of the very first books that I read in ebook format. Uh, so I don't have a physical copy of the book, so I printed out a copy of the cover, picture of the cover, so you can see what it looks like. Um, Howard Engel was a Canadian mystery writer who was born in 1931 and who died in 2019. He's best known for a series of de uh, detective novels starring private eye Benny Cooperman. Uh, his ex-wife, his former wife, uh, Marion Engel, also became a prominent Canadian author. She wrote a very controversial novel in the 1970s called Bear, which I may talk about in a future video. Howard Engel's Life changed dramatically one morning in 2001 when he woke up, uh, got out of bed, and went to the front door to pick up the morning newspaper. When he picked up the newspaper, it just looked like gibberish. He couldn't read it. it was, the letters were all scrambled. At first, he thought this was a practical joke uh, pulled by one of his sons. So, uh, he, But when he went back inside the house, and went to the kitchen, he noticed he couldn't read any of the labels on any of the foods, uh, food containers in the in the uh, kitchen. So he realized then something something was wrong with his brain. So something terrible had happened. He called his son, and his son came to take him to the emergency room. And on the drive to the hospital, he noticed he couldn't read any of the uh, traffic signs either. Well, after a series of tests, they discovered that uh, Howard Engel had suffered a stroke in the middle of the night, in his sleep, and it had damaged the part of his brain that processes words. So Howard Engelman developed a rare condition known as alexia, which is the uh, loss of the ability to read. Now, strangely enough, he was still able to write. Uh, he could actually sit down at a typewriter and type words, but he couldn't make sense of what he was typing, and so he didn't know if he was typing correctly or not. He could touch type, but he couldn't make sense of in, in any of the letters that he was typing. And he had no other no other deficits. He could still uh, remember things. He didn't suffer from amnesia. He could, could still talk to people and understand words orally. But the part of his brain that dealt with words had been compromised by the stroke, and so he could no longer read. Now, try to, re try to imagine what that must be like for someone who was a writer, a professional writer, to suddenly lose the ability to read. It was emotionally devastating for him. Also, he had his driver's license taken away because he could no longer read traffic signs or street signs, so the Canadian government wouldn't let him drive. So after years of being able to drive on his own, he lost the ability to do that. He went through, uh, he spent a couple of weeks in a hospital and uh, several weeks after that going through uh, in, in inpatient therapy sessions, and he had regular therapy sessions after that. He even consulted uh, the famous um, uh, neurologist Dr. Oliver Sacks, who writes an afterword in this book. Oliver Sacks wrote, wrote, wrote an afterword to this book. Um, Oliver Sacks is the author of Awakenings and a number of other books about brain injuries and uh, neurology. Um, and so eventually, after a long, slow process, Engel gradually developed a technique to read again, although it was very, very time consuming. And it's also rather bizarre. Uh, he was able to, he would look at a word, he would look at a letter in a word, and then using the tip of his tongue, he would trace the, the outline of the letter on the roof of his mouth. And somehow when he did that, his brain would recognize the letter. So one letter at a time, he had to trace the outline of the letter on his roof of his mouth in order to read, uh, which just seems strange. But again, it's another part of the brain, right? Uh, that's, he was using a different part of the brain than the part of the brain that's normally used to process words. And by doing that, he was slowly, very slowly, able to read some uh, words. It was a very laborious process. Uh, Engel wrote, besides writing this memoir, he wrote two other novels after his stroke uh, before he retired. Uh, and in the process there, he would dictate the, the book into a recording device, and then a secretary would type up the transcript. Uh, but because Engel couldn't read the transcript, uh, it had to be read back to him by a secretary a line at a time so that he could make corrections um, because he couldn't he couldn't read what he was writing, which just seems really odd to me. Um, so if you are interested in uh, 
neurology, if you like Oliver Sacks' books or if you've read other stroke memoirs, you may be interested in this. Uh, of course, being a professional writer, uh, Engel's, Engel's uh, account of his stroke and his recovery is, is very gripping. It's very well written. Uh, and so you might want to be uh, might want to might want to look into this really fascinating story. And if you haven't read any of Oliver Sacks' books, uh, he's one of my favorite writers. Uh, you, you might uh, try that too. Awakenings: The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. Um, uh, he did write. I, I should mention this. Uh, after consulting, after Engel consulted Sacks, Sacks included uh, Engel's case in a uh, chapter in his book called The Mind's Eye. Uh, which is a, a book about blindness or visual impairment. And so Engel pops up a, as a case study in that book as well. The book is The Man Who Forgot How to Read. The author is Howard Engel. This has been another Man in Great book review. Thanks for watching.